She finally kissed her sweetheart. Miss Yuko. <laughs> That's the episode with Ruth Bellamy, right? Been meaning to catch that. Okay, Captain, she's gone. I'm near about vibrating, I'm so excited. So she got here, and, well, she sneezed. She said, wow, new soap? And I was like, yeah, rose-ish. <laughs> Turns out it tickled her nose. Oops. And then she just sort of touched my arm real gentle-like and called the cut of my outfit elegant. I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard. Then I led her into the kitchen. I think she about cried when she saw the spread. Well, sure, you could see, but I thought maybe you'd want to know some of what was said. You ain't much of a romantic, huh, Captain? We both see enough engines in our day-to-day. -day. There's nothing special about sitting next to another one, even if ours is real sweet. June hardly ever makes it down to Groundbreaker's mess during regular meal times, so... Sharing the kitchen was special, like being part of a real family. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary, said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. One of us has got to be. We're both... June's so reserved and I'm so shy. I I worried if I never said anything, nothing would ever get said, you know? I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She, she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor and how it made her want to be more open. She was worried she wouldn't get the words out right, especially after that message about Isabel. It's sweet. Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! And then she sneezed again, on account of the flowery soap. It's all on your account, you know. Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met June Lay at all. I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna head to my cabin and happy scream into my pillow for like an hour. Something on your mind? It's like one of those stuffy art gallery pieces. Looks okay from far off, but once you get close, you realize it's just some mismatched shit everyone's agreed to overpay for. Even the bribes are overpriced.
Don't trust anyone, don't touch anything, and whatever you do, don't show your teeth when you smile. People are extremely competitive about cosmetic dentistry. It can get ugly. Interesting like a colonoscopy. I trained as a surgeon. More my folks' idea than mine, but I made the best of it. Hey, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Didn't help that most of my actual work was tightening calves and firming up chins. Turns out Byzantines are more concerned with having square shoulders and a good profile than, well, anything else. That's what I've been saying. We're now in orbit of a stellar bay, Captain. I think I've figured out what you need. Besides a smoke and some privacy? Our crew's like a machine. All the parts got to work together or we'll shake ourselves to pieces. I've never been good with metaphors, Parvati. We need each other to work right. You need a team, and I need someone who'll be truthful with me. Even when it hurts. The only thing I need is people's day.
So what's the plan? Ellie, we gotta talk. My second least favorite set of four words. Here we go. You gotta stop treating me with kid gloves. I'm not gonna fall to pieces if you look at me sideways, and I'm not going away. It's fine if you don't like me, but we gotta find a way to work together. For the crew. Never heard you sound this forceful. It's kind of refreshing.
So you really want to be real, huh? Sure do. All right. From now on, you're getting raw, unfiltered, Ellie. Hope you got some rubber gloves. Marilyn, is that you? Mars, we certainly didn't expect to see you like this. And I didn't expect you to renew your marriage contract. But we're all full of surprises today, aren't we? Speaking of surprises, you should meet my new friend. We've been running around the system for a while now, stirring up all sorts of trouble. There you go again, Captain. Always menacing, polite society. Anyway, you're probably wondering where I've been all this time. Not <clears throat> exactly. The last few years have been a bloody haze. You wouldn't believe the messes we've gotten ourselves into. Right? Yep, we're a pair of disgraceful lowlifes. Marilyn, this really isn't the best time. Uh, perhaps you should go. I mean, we had other business in Byzantium, so it's not like we went out of our way. But you can't just kick us out. We'll stay as long as we like. And while we're at it, we'll drink your expensive hooch, wear our outside shoes all over your nice floors. Just a second. You had the floors redone with real Terran marble? Since when can you afford that? That's what we've been trying to tell you, dear, but you must understand, we hadn't heard from you in ages. We thought you were dead. I'm not dead. I just never wanted to talk to you again. I'm afraid the distinction was lost on us, darling. We only did what any grieving parents in our position would do. We collected on your life insurance policy. And the payouts have been rather, uh, substantial. You what? What vulgar company you keep, Marilyn? Well, now that I'm here, I guess you'll just have to report back that I'm very much alive and kicking. It's not that simple. For one thing, we'd have to cut back on so many necessities. The neighbors would be sure to notice. Damn right, Captain. Fine. I'm gone. Forever this time. you do I didn't like how things went down either but did you have to go and kill them attacking
What in the void did you do? I didn't like how things went down either, but did you have to go and kill them? I guess I did too, when I joined up with you. You're on your own now. Consider my debt to you forgotten and cancelled. Don't let the door clip you on the way out. Let's talk outside. Let's talk outside. What do you think you're doing? Can you believe those two? We'd hardly been there a minute and they turned us out like yesterday's garbage. But not like I wanted. I had it all planned out. They'd both be sitting there watching one of their vapid Aetherwave dramas and then we'd walk in. Mother would drop her mock apple cider and the glass would shatter all over their overpriced marble. Father would tear off his glasses and blink open-mouthed. I'd have a great one-liner in the tube. I was thinking either, the leather's fake but the scars are real, or, oops, did I just track awesome onto your rug? Yeah, I'm gonna use that one day. Now, getting back to my story. Father would throw his hands up, because this would be just like me, to come back and make a big scene. Then, Mother would do the old, You had us worried sick. Her eyes would be red, and she'd have her fist in front of her mouth to stifle a sob. I'm not hurt. I'm outraged, affronted even. I just didn't want to get booted out of the house I grew up in like that. It's embarrassing, you know, and I've got a reputation to maintain. I'd love to know how you'd describe getting kneecapped. Uh-oh, it looks like we're in for a big talk. I always thought I knew that. Didn't realize it would take getting stabbed in the back to really get it. Good thing it happened with a couple top rungers who can't stick worse than a butter knife in me. They've got no idea what a real double cross looks like. Much less a Hephaestian triple cross. Or an inverted Olympian blind cross. Wait a second. What if I could get that money? I could open a new account, designate that account holder as a sole beneficiary. All the payouts would go to me. I'll make money without doing a thing. And I'll get to cut them off. My policy is with the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group. They have an office in Byzantium. Maybe you could use some of your people skills to help me set up a dummy beneficiary account. If that doesn't work, I'm sure we can find one of their terminals and do it ourselves. What a relief. The less time we have to spend in Byzantium, the better. 
Something on your mind? Something's changed with my pistol's trigger pull. You been tinkering again? Maybe just a little. Is that all right with you? It's a lot smoother. Thanks. Huh. Happy to help. We're now in orbit above Fallbrook, Captain. I think I'll initiate a This looks like the place. You ready to get my money or what? You really did it. Give these payouts a few years and I'll be rolling in it. I've never been prouder to stand back and watch someone else work. I'm just glad my folks aren't gonna live off that awful story they made up. <laughs> Maybe now they'll have to go back to real jobs. Come on, I thought we were celebrating. <laughs> you want me to think about the future?
If only you could have been my chief surgeon back in the day. Anyway, enough of that. You did a job for me, so here's your fee. Could have fooled me with all your tough talk. What's gotten into you? I always thought it meant we get used to the smell of each other's dirty socks. But you really do see a rosier version of things, huh? You don't have to get all mushy about it. Still, maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's good to watch someone's back now and then so that one day they watch yours. So you just keep the money. One of us has to look out for your interests. Don't mention it. Really, this feels weird enough as it is. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Certainly, Captain. I was hoping you would ask. I'm obsessed. 
My quest to stop them. Revenge my partner, Philip. My ex-partner, Bernice. And Lieutenant Yu. had brought me to this distillery. It wasn't just the triple distilled the spectrum. I made sure the brain eater News Network with breaking news. Halcyon Helen has been murdered. Administrator Ludovico of Zos refused to answer the big question on everyone's mind. Who will Spectrum's next spokesperson be? Claiming that a special investigation must be concluded. We have a communication coming in from one Administrator Ludovico. Get off the transmission, Cedric. We agreed to let me do the negotiating. Law be with you, friend. I am Administrator Ludovico of the famed Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. But there's no need to stand on formality. You may address me as Mr. Her death is the tragedy of our lifetime. As the face of our new product line, her murder is a stain on the Rizzo's brand. She was scheduled to unveil our newest product, Spectrum Brown, before this tragic event. But we cannot move forward with our unveiling until we apprehend the killer. All right, Ludovico, that's enough. You don't know what you're doing. Let me handle this. The infamous Captain Hawthorne. You have such a remarkable talent for upsetting Sublight's authorities. Cedric Kincannon, Sublight Underground. I'm so glad we're hiring a third-party investigator. No one wants to see a troop of UDL guards stomping all over my hotel. Least of all me. The murder of Halcyon Helen is a heinous assault on this colony. I look forward to watching you find the miscreant responsible and drag them out of the shadows. Two-bit actor. Oh, Captain. This isn't Spencer Woolrich we're talking about. This is Halcyon Helen, Princess of Periodicals, Duchess of Dramaturgy. You would not believe the money she made us on Dissident Busters. For law's sake, Cedric. Could you show a little discretion and not bring up your contraband operations in front of an outsider? Please, Lou. Sublight Underground is built on discretion. I'm establishing rapport with our new contractor. Let's not give her the impression that you can't be trusted. Do you really want to do this right now, Cedric? You want to antagonize me while I'm negotiating a contract? Because I promise you, I'll win. First sensible thing I've heard all day. Oh, uh, my apologies, Mr. Ludovico. That was unprofessional of me. Captain, I'm Constable Maria Keene. Hiring a third-party investigator was my idea. I've been studying your dossier. You're a specialist. I understand you have a talent for misappropriation and bypassing security. 
I may not approve of these talents, but I appreciate your skill. As far as I'm concerned, you're the ideal inspector for this case. Just the three of us. You must excuse us. The situation on Eridanos is tense. If we don't bring Helen's killer to justice, this scandal could scupper our entire operation. Please, Captain. I'm asking you to help us. While you're pursuing your investigation, we'll make you a guest of honor at the Grand Colonial. I encourage you to consider this offer seriously. The future of our complex may depend on your success. I'll leave you in the constable's care. Mr. Kincannon and I must have a word. Fine. Bud Rizzo's is paying for that hotel room. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And even though they may not show their gratitude, I know Administrator Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon appreciate your involvement. Mr. Kincannon could lose his spaceport if board authorities took over the investigation. And if Rizzo's is forced to cancel its unveiling, we might never recover. Helen was more than popular. She gave something to this colony that no product line could ever provide. Real happiness. No one has ever been as well-known or as well-loved. Uh, outside of our courageous business leaders. Transmission terminated. Captain, we are now cleared to land at the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. There are several reasons why someone would hire your services. In descending order of likelihood, they are as follows. Desperation, confusion, mistaken identity, inebriation, and genuine faith in your abilities. Eridanos is a hydrogen helium gas giant, distinguished by a well-defined ring system. The Eridanos Atmospheric Complex is a system of land masses propelled through a thin layer of the upper atmosphere, where humans are potentially capable of surviving. Captain, we've arrived in Eridanos. Captain, it's beautiful up here. We... We get more jobs like this one. Hello, hello, hello there. Hope your atmospheric entry wasn't too troublesome. As a guest of honor, you deserve the best in comfort. Sublight Salvage and Shipping Underground, or Slug, as we like to call ourselves, is delighted to welcome you to Eridanos. I'm the Grand Colonial Head Bellhop. I'm here to grab your bags and direct you, the inspector, to the Grand Ballroom, which was the scene of the crime. I'll say. There's nary a soul here who wasn't a fan of hers in some respect. Just about everybody's shot. Some people are inconsolable. Hell. Even Black Hole Birdie, Helen's bow has wandered off. Some folks think he had something to do with the murder, but I don't believe it. I still don't understand why anyone would have it in for Ms. Helen. 
We should ask if they're comping the minibar. This might take a while if you get me. Folks get heated when it comes to serials and their actors, I suppose. Not particularly, but I think some folks were jealous of her success or otherwise viewed her as a threat. Reckon how she came about her fame didn't help. I imagine the admin briefed you about Helen's part in the Spectrum Brown unveiling. Too bad about the postponement. Not so terrible as Helen's murder, but still a crying shame. I do. Rizzo's happened to rent out the Grand Colonial Ballroom from Slug for the unveiling. A nice mutually beneficial event. But the murder's gone and ruined that. Along with nine out of ten of my favorite cereals. Anyway, I think I've held you up long enough. Once you're ready, head down to the lobby. The ballroom is just behind the elevators. Meanwhile, I'll grab your bags. I could have sworn you just said we aren't allowed to do Greetings, Inspector. No need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. You should be able to find the Colonial right ahead. Sublight Underground appreciates your patronage. Oh, my stars. This Mrs. is the hotel? I only ever see in a place like this in periodicals. Or that one episode of Agent Khan. Really is a terrible shame. I absolutely adored her serials. I almost can't imagine someone wretched enough. I wish I'd worn my. I'll bet you ten bits this is all just some sort of publicity. With Halcyon Helen gone, does that mean Spencer Woolrich will get all her roles? I certainly hope not. That man doesn't even act as well as I do. Black Hole Bertie's disappeared, you know. That poor fellow must I be inconsolable. Oh, thank the law. Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. Constable Maria Keane, it's good to meet you in person, Inspector. Dr. Goodnight, ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on. Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. What body? Oh, that. Goodness, no. This is far more interesting than Halcyon Helen's rapidly cooling corpse. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. I'm so glad you asked. Allow me to explain. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. Oh, goodness, no. I don't care for OSI doctrine. I just enjoy their math. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene.
nice. The discrepancy amplifier is now operational. Greetings, designated inspector and or unauthorized larcenist. This unit has detected a discrepancy related to Halcyon Helen. Unscheduled expiration of begin amplification. The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed with advanced speech recognition scientific analysis, and deterministic calculus protocols. Oh, you'll love this. Amplifier, tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy amplifier. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the Grand Ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Footprint is a teller made 8.75 suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purpleberries and grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purpleberries can all be found in the purpleberry orchards, located not far from the Grand Colonio. This deduction appears sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. autograph when I had the chance. You'd think these people have never seen a corpse before. I'm sorry, ma'am, but while the hotel is an active crime scene, I regret to inform you that all new bookings, room upgrades, room downgrades, and in-room massages are suspect. Oh, you're the special inspector. Mr. Kincannon warned me you'd be checking in soon. Ah, yes. We are most pleased to offer you our grandest of grand accommodations, Inspector. The penthouse suite on our topmost floor is now available for you. The last guest left her belongings behind when she vacated unexpectedly, so we needed a little time to tidy the suite up for you. Simply call the elevator in the lobby and our highly skilled operator will deliver you to your private floor with efficiency and cheer. My apologies, Inspector, but that would be a severe violation of guest privacy. We here at the Grand Colonial firmly believe that... All right, my supervisor just walked out of earshot. Some folks just don't understand the importance of gossip. About whom? And what would you wish to know? 
You know, out of everyone here, I probably knew the least about Helen. I'm not much of an Aether Wave watcher myself. And Helen always had a crowd of admirers chasing her, you see? So she rarely stopped to chat. Friendly enough, surely, but always seemed untouchable. Emphasis on seemed. Everyone wanted to be around Helen. She could usually be seen alongside Bertie or Woolrich, for obvious reasons. Ah, uh, Bertie. Is he bigger than he is dumb, or dumber than he is big? I have a bet with a friend. Not sure we'll ever get it to pay out. Bertie used to be Helen's beau, though he isn't anymore and not just because she's dead. If I had a million bits, I'd spend everyone just to learn what caused their split. If looks could kill, he'd have put her in the ground ten times over. Man's clearly jealous of her success compared to his. See, I'd bet we're the only two people thinking about him in all of Eridanos. And I only am because you mentioned his name. If you leave woolly cow milk out, it turns to curds. Leave the curds out, they begin to get stale, then rot. Woolridge is on his way to the trash bin, and everyone knows it. Either he's in denial, or he knew Helen would be checking out soon, judging by his increasing demands for a room upgrade. That's a shame, Inspector. What if I wanted to know a little about you? Then I guess we'll have to see if you find Helen's murderer, won't we? Myself, and all of the staff at the Grand Colonial, will be rooting for you, Inspector. It certainly is a marvel of modern ingenuity, luxury, and ambition. Please, allow me to answer any curiosities you might have about our building and the amenities on offer. Who would be interested in a staff-only area? Most folks never ask about the sewers beneath Arizo's plant, either. Oh no, Inspector, ma'am. I live down there too. But that doesn't mean I plan to abide in the bowels of the Grand Colonial forever. The best thing about Sublight compared to other organizations is the potential for upward mobility. We bottom rungers get in, do our job, do it well, then move up and on. This is but one rung on the grand ladder of life, you see? Most certainly, all the important folks can be found in the utmost parts of the hotel. You can hardly walk three feet without bumping into a tossball great or a bored exec. Though maybe don't bump into them. Could be harmful to your health. Twice the size of the next biggest room, and kit it out with any amenity you want, as well as many that you won't. Best to enjoy it while you can, Inspector. Typically, the only people who can afford the penthouse suite have enough bits to suffocate everyone on Terra 2. Also, please inform me if Woolridge gives you a hard time about getting a better room than his. Don't tell him I said this, but everyone on staff wants to strangle him. If you're sure. Hello there, my inordinately esteemed guest. If my hello were any more earnest, this loudspeaker would explode! Whose authorized floor can I bring you to? Oh, so sorry, but you're not actually authorized to visit that floor. Next stop, the finest seat in the house. here feels too sweet. Almost sticky.
Inspector, I understand you've visited the scene of the crime. Halcyon Helen was an important cultural icon. She will be sorely missed. Ah, agreed. Tell me about your investigation. Your discretion is appreciated. I admit, I'm beginning to feel more confident in this arrangement. Here, I'm granting you access through the gates to the orchards. You're officially authorized to see this investigation through to the end. There is one caveat. Cedric's being rather intransigent about letting you into the spaceport. Possibly he's trying to hide something. Possibly he wants to annoy me. Possibly both. I agree with the sentiment behind your snide remark. Unfortunately, the Piraeus spaceport is Cedric's purview, not mine. You have a lead to chase. Law speed, Inspector. Beyond my job description to ask, but at my heart, I'm still a bellhop. 